Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about why exhaust back pressure is bad. We're also going to be talking about exhaust velocity and exhaust scavenging, which are both good. And so first we're going to start pretty basic and then we're going to get into more complicated aspects of how exhausts work. Uh, so starting with the very basics, we have our engine here, it's got an intake, it's got an exhaust, the power stroke has just happened, so our piston is at bottom dead center, and we're about to press out all that exhaust, uh, those spent combustion gases, once this exhaust valve opens. So within this chamber, Pressure is about six to seven times atmospheric. It could be more or less depending on the engine design. Of course, outside pressure is atmospheric. So about six to seven times as high inside the cylinder. And of course, one atmosphere outside uh, coming in your exhaust. Now, once this exhaust valve opens, of course, that high pressure is going to want to leave and go towards the lower pressure. Uh, and so we're going to define back pressure as pressure with the opposite direction of flow. So, of course, as that valve opens, the high pressure in here wants to escape because there's lower pressure out here. So it moves out the exhaust. Now, back pressure would be resisting that. Uh, so we have atmospheric pressure outside of the exhaust. So one way to think about this, why back pressure is bad, uh, take, for example, if you were to lower atmospheric pressure uh, extremely low. So now you have a vacuum out here. Well, now the pressure differential between outside and within your engine is even higher. So the exhaust is going to want to go out even faster. Uh, now, the whole purpose of an exhaust is to evacuate those spent gases as quickly and as efficiently as possible. Now, if you were to take pressure that was way above atmospheric, let's say it was 10 times atmospheric pressure, well, now that's going to resist that exhaust coming out. So once that exhaust opens, if ambient pressure was 10 times what's inside here, you're actually gonna have air flowing reverse. It's gonna go the opposite direction. So you can see that as you increase back pressure, it does the opposite of what you're, you want your exhaust to do, which is to evacuate and get rid of those exhaust fumes as quickly and as efficiently as possible. So back pressure is bad, it's not a good thing. So why do people say, well, you need some back pressure? Well, it's kind of misleading and it has to do with exhaust velocity. So restrictions create back pressure. If you have a super restrictive exhaust that's a really narrow diameter exhaust, that's restrictive, that's going to have a lot of back pressure. It's also going to have a very high velocity uh, because you're forcing all of those fumes out through a very tiny channel, so they're going to move very quickly. If you had a super large exhaust, you're not gonna have much restriction, uh, but consequently, you're not going to have much velocity uh, of your exhaust flow. So your exhaust is gonna to flow too slowly uh, to escape out into the atmosphere. Ideal is somewhere in between. Uh, so a restriction causes a negative effect, which is back pressure, uh, but it also causes a positive effect, which is high velocity. Uh, so you want some balance of, of you know, velocity uh, and minimal back pressure. Somewhere in the middle is that sweet spot where you have good exhaust flow, good speed to it, you have good scavenging characteristics, uh, but however, you don't have too much back pressure, resisting that flow, resisting your exhaust escaping, uh, meaning you would be making less power. Okay, so now let's get a bit more complicated and talk about header design and exhaust tube length design. So you have your four cylinder engine right here, and here you have the header, of course, exaggerated with these diameter widths here. Uh, but regardless, the four cylinders, they all merge at one point as they come out into these exhaust pipes into a collector, where all four then flow together through the rest of the exhaust. Well, there's a process here that happens that is ideal for exhaust scavenging. So we're gonna talk about how this process works. So the first thing that happens is you have, of course, your combustion phase. Now your piston's at bottom dead center and you need to release those exhaust gases. So the exhaust valve opens and immediately a positive pressure wave is created that travels outward at the speed of sound. Of course, behind that, following that, are the exhaust gases coming out because of that pressure differential. So that pressure wave continues to move down your exhaust pipe, uh, through your exhaust, and then of course your exhaust gas is following behind. And once your piston gets about halfway up, now you don't have quite as big of a pressure differential between inside the cylinder and outside the cylinder. And so the problem with this is, is it means your exhaust gases aren't gonna wanna travel. The remaining exhaust gases that are still within that cylinder aren't going to wanna travel out very quickly. So that's a problem. We of course don't want those exhaust gases to remain there uh, because that means our next combustion cycle won't be as effective. Okay, so this pressure wave is traveling along, and any time uh, a pressure wave changes, uh, reaches a point in the piping that changes diameter, it's going to reflect back a pressure wave. Uh, so any cross-sectional change will cause this. So a collector, for example, um, if the piping were to step up or step down, and of course, as it exits the exhaust at the very end uh, of your tailpipe. So anytime there's a cross-sectional change, and the amplitude of that reflected wave that's coming back uh, is, you know, proportional 
proportional to how big or small uh, that step is, that change in diameter. So if the change in diameter is larger, the wave that's going back uh, is going to have a greater effect. The amplitude will be increased. Now, a positive pressure wave, uh, which is what comes out initially, uh, is reflected back if you were to step down. So if this collector were to get smaller, which you of course wouldn't want to do, it would send back a positive pressure wave. Because it's getting larger, it sends back a negative pressure wave. And so that negative pressure wave starts traveling back and what you want to happen, so that piston all the while is of course still moving upwards. What you want to happen is for that negative pressure wave to come back at the exact right time, uh, and there's going to be a bit of a window, so it doesn't have to be you know, one specific RPM, but generally this will be a, a good effect for a specific RPM range uh, rather than across the entire RPM range, of course based on the tubing length and you know, based on diameter, things like that, uh, which affect how this pressure wave comes back. So, it's coming back, you want to time it so that just before that exhaust valve closes and your intake valve opens, that negative pressure wave arrives and helps lower the pressure in there, pulling out the remaining exhaust gases, so you have basically an entire empty chamber. Then with that low pressure, once your intake valve opens, it helps pull in fresh air because you've got a bigger temperature or a bigger pressure differential between the intake and within the cylinder. So if you get that pressure really low within the cylinder, right before that intake valve opens, it helps pull in additional gas. Uh, and of course, that means you have uh, better scavenging, better scavenging, and then as a result, you have more air and fuel that gets pulled in and you can make more power. Now again, this is all dependent on that pipe length, of course, because it has to do with how fast does that wave travel. It reaches the collector, creates that reflected wave once it hits the collector, and then travels the way back through those exhaust gases. So during that process, uh, you want to time it so that it arrives at the right time. And these can help out different cylinders. It has, doesn't have to necessarily be the exact same cylinder. Uh, but you get what's going on here where you want that negative pressure wave to arrive, help pull out those remaining exhaust gases, and then help pull in uh, that fresh intake air. Now on top of this, there's something called inertial scavenging. And so if you think about like throwing a ball or a car driving, uh, of course behind that car is a low pressure area because it's pushing the air out of the way. And the same thing happens uh, with these exhaust gases. So when they open up and it sends out that high pressure exhaust pulse, that exhaust, uh, that air has inertia to it because it's traveling at a very high speed. And so as it travels through the pipe, it creates a low pressure area behind it. So as it's traveling, it can start filling up this area with low pressure and that's of course dependent on its velocity and its velocity is also of course dependent on the piping diameter so if it's too wide it'll have a low low velocity and it won't have that very low pressure area behind it if it's too restrictive uh, you have too much back pressure it's not allowing those exhaust gases to escape uh, and that's causing your engine to have to work harder to push out those exhaust gases uh, so you know there's a sweet spot where you have the perfect amount of scavenging from both uh, wave scavenging and from inertial scavenging where this piping diameter uh, and the piping length are both very critical in the performance of your engine for a specific RPM range. Of course, if you were to tune this incorrectly, if you were to have the wrong length, you can hurt the performance of it if you have this wave arrive at the incorrect time. It can actually be detrimental and cause you to have even less power uh, than if you didn't do this at all. Uh, so timing is very important. Tubing length, tubing diameter, all very critical in how this system works and how you have that exhaust scavenging. So hopefully, you know, this is a decent uh, basic overview of how this all works. Gives you an idea of why you don't want back pressure, uh, but why you do want scavenging and you do want exhaust velocity to help out with that scavenging. So thank you all for watching and if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them below.